Hey, what's going on everybody? It is Nick here, back with a brand new video. Today, we're going to be talking about a ton of stuff that's happening in the market, kind of analyzing a few things and really going over what I'm seeing happen here soon, shortly for XRP as well. Uh, of course, I really kind of want to keep you guys all the way updated on everything, but I, it's very hard to get a ton of content out because this isn't my you know, job. I mean, overall, I'm not getting paid at all for this. So it does take quite a bit of time out of my day, but you guys know that I will pretty much always try to keep you guys updated on everything that I see. So there will be quite a bit more content coming out here very shortly, uh, but nonetheless, let's jump into it. So Ethereum broke $4,000 today, guys. We're currently trading at about $4,100, and you guys might be wondering, all right, who cares? I mean, you don't talk about Ethereum on this channel, so why even talk about it? Uh, and that's because Ethereum is actually a big key component for all season for anybody that is new here. Uh, for anybody that is a veteran, you guys already know that once Ethereum kind of flips Bitcoin in terms of dominance, we are going to fly and we are getting very, very close. And we'll talk more about that. But for the most part, I do want to say, uh, you know, I buy Ethereum in terms of the fact that it's going to make me money, so it only makes sense. That's the only reason why I buy Ethereum. I don't support it. I don't support the project. I don't support the team at all. It's just one of those holds that if it makes money, it makes sense. And that's pretty much at the end of the day. That's the only reason why I hold it. But nonetheless, let's jump into it. So Ethereum, the premier altcoin, broke out of its consolidation phase recently and has been registering new highs over the past week. Since the beginning of April, the bullish narrative has been quite evident, with the coin projecting tremendous momentum, with a market capitalization over $463 billion at press time, Ethereum was trading at $4,003, marking a 35% surge over the past week. And this is actually very interesting, and the only reason why I want to say this is because if we look at this from a realistic standpoint, so let me open this uh, fully. And we look at just the month of May, so about here, you guys could see that we rose over 600%. And you guys already know that I love the percentage, you know, sort of idea. I just want to say on XRP, if we rose 600%, that would put us at about, that would put us at about $11, give or take. Just want to say, it's it's not impossible to happen in such a short amount of time, as Ethereum kind of just showed us that. You know, it happened in days, and that's exactly what alt season is: is major gains in such a short amount of time to make you pretty much question life itself. I mean, that's the best way that I could describe it. But I do want to get back to this article because it's very interesting for us overall. So, uh, Sentiment, a crypto analytics firm, stated that the altcoin's MVRVZ score, which is the ratio between market cap and realized cap, and standard deviation of market cap, was now at its highest point since January of 2018. We all know what happened in 2017 into 2018. Uh, this is a bullish signal for Ethereum in the long run. And I think that this is a bullish signal for not only Ethereum, but the entire market overall. All. But nonetheless, let's continue. So Ethereum surged by almost 400% uh, since the start of the year with year-to-date returns of 441% at the time. Uh, the altcoin has hit and breached consecutive all-time highs over the past few days. Just a week ago, the Ethereum had breached the 3000k level, and now the coin's uptrend has been a little more consistent, something that has encouraged many an uh, analysts to boldly project a target for this rally. I just want to say, you guys already know, uh, my target personally for this run, I would say maybe a top at 10K, but me personally, I'm looking more for, you know, $7,500. I think that's very safe. So let's continue. A series of events that contributed to the altcoins rally. This includes the issuance of EIB's first ever Ethereum bond, Ethereum's increase in dominance and the consistent price rally and an overall increase in institutional interest. And I really want to highlight this right here because we're going to be talking about that very shortly here soon uh, many industry experts and analysts have capped a target of ten thousand uh, dollars for the alt's current rally entrepreneur 
Mark Cuban in recent interview went on to state that he thinks that Ethereum has a greater long-term value than Bitcoin, uh, period, end of story, because Ethereum has more utility than Bitcoin does. All right, so I just kind of want to give my opinion on people like Mark Cuban talking about <laughs> cryptocurrency. Just stop. Uh, these people, you know, for anybody who's out there kind of following these billionaires on a path to you know, completely being wrecked. Um, just kind of ignore them overall. Like for an example, Elon Musk spitting knowledge about Doge or anything. Kind of just ignore that. that. I mean, that's the best advice I could honestly give to anybody. Because if we look at Mark Cuban, he knows nothing about cryptocurrency. He doesn't really know anything about what these use cases involve at all. You know, I, I watched interviews with him where he just talks about blockchain technology and he doesn't really understand it from you know, a technical standpoint at all. Uh, so I, I think when these people talk, yeah, sure, it's good for publicity for cryptocurrency, but overall it's terrible for the space because it brings individuals into the space that think that they know what cryptocurrency is, but they don't at all because they're not doing their research. They're listening to people like Mark Cuban. But nonetheless, let's jump back into it. So here's what has contributed to institutions taking Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other cryptocurrencies. And this is from an hour ago, actually, but <clears throat> I do want to talk to you guys about this because this is actually very big. So if you guys know Grayscale, which we kind of already all know, it's kind of like a investing firm, I would say. Uh, basically, they're bringing on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies overall, and the numbers actually are here. So pretty much with assets under management growing from just under $2 billion at the beginning of 2020 to over $50 billion at press time. Uh, and I, I really want to highlight the fact that $50 billion at this current time is massive because even if we look over here at the live coin watch, now a lot of this stuff is actually not in real time. Like if I refresh this, don't know if they're going to update. Yeah, so they're not going to really update. Um, if we look at $50 billion, that's the market cap of DOT, Bitcoin Cash, uh, Litecoin. You know, it, it's pretty much swallowing up all these assets. And just imagine if $50 billion came into play for like ADA or, you know, XRP. It, I mean, that's a massive amount of money just from one institutional investor alone. So I, I'm expecting a lot more institutional money to really flow into this market. And it's very good overall for the price because right now we're trading at about a 2.5 uh, trillion dollar market cap right now and you guys already know that I'm expecting 7 to 10 trillion dollars overall at the end of the day and I still think that 2.5 or even you know 5 trillion dollars is still massive because that's two times from our current price right now but I do think that 7 to 10 trillion dollars is very possible by the end of this bull run and you guys already know that I mentioned it many times on why I think that that is going to happen. Uh, but nonetheless, let's get back into this. So that is a steep rate of growth, uh, especially for the institutional side of the market. However, which entities uh, exactly have been parties to the aforementioned surge? Uh, well, according to Phil Bonello, director of research at Grayscale Investments, uh, most of the institutional interest coming its way being dominated by hedge funds and family offices. While the executive did comment on growing enthusiasm among pensions and endowments, Vanilla was quick to underline their nature as a slow-moving institutions. Uh, and then we have a similar point was made by crypto investor firm Copper's Asen Kostadinov. I hope I said that right. Recently, with the official going on to speculate that Coinbase's IPO is only going to spur more institutional interest from these very actors. And then we also have... Uh, what have been the reasons behind the said growth, however? Uh, Bonello, during a recent appearance on the Thinking Crypto, commented that what has happened over the past few months is the narrative of monetary inflation has gathered steam. This narrative, pushed uh, by Paul Tudor Jones last year and presented from an institutional trading perspective, won a lot of supporters over the past year. He added, The above, coupled with the appreciation in M2, may have contributed to institutions taking Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto market more seriously than in the past. And I think that's actually very interesting because now they're seeing that cryptocurrency is not an inflated 
currency at the end of the day. Plus, they're not really currencies at the end of the day because, yeah, sure, they could be utilized in that way. You're also investing in solid projects. But I think this is very interesting <clears throat> because, like I said, you know, people are now seeing, hey, you know, cryptocurrency is not, you know, deflating like the U.S. dollar because we're just continuously print and print and print or inflate. Sorry, by the, by the way. Uh, but overall, you know, cryptocurrency is deflating. I mean, that's major right now because we need that. We need something that deflates because the U.S. dollar is getting to, you know, maximum potential in terms of, you know, where it's actually going. Because now it's kind of finished. You know, we are at a boiling point where we're seeing the US dollar almost top out at major, major debt increases with, you know, printing $3 trillion. It's just massive amounts of money just kind of being poured down the drain, in my opinion. But, anyways, let's jump back into it. So, Benella also touched upon uh, GBD, uh, GBTC, sorry about that, and how it has traded at a discount lately, according to the executive. That isn't something that we necessarily have a curb on. It's really just a market phenomenon. And you know, it's a market supply and demand issue. At the time of writing, uh, Grayscale's Bitcoin's uh, premium had fallen to 12.61%. It's worth noting, however, that a few weeks ago, the same had fallen as low as 18.92%, its lowest point ever. Over the past few months, there has been a lot of talk around the future of Grayscale Bitcoin with Grayscale Investments and Michael Sonashine. Hope that I said that right as well. I'm sorry if I'm butchering these names. Going on record to state that our intention had always been to convert these products into an ETF when permissible. Uh, the firm's director of research came out in support of the same two, with the executive adding that there's still a long road to go in this regulatory environment. Vanilla also conceded to Grayscale approaching corporates with the pitch of buying Grayscale Bitcoin to gain exposure to cryptos rather than jumping through hoops. To buy the underlying asset with the executive handling the accounting benefits that come with taking such a step uh, interestingly a similar point was raised by avanti's caitlin long a few months ago when commenting on tesla's own purchase of bitcoin finally the grayscale executive also had to say on how dogecoin the crypto market's premier joke coin had been doing of late he said i don't think that you could fight it it's the market, and if the market decides that Doge is worth more than $60 billion or whatever, so yeah, this is the idea of financial populism. I think that's actually a good take on it as well, but I still think that Doge was massively manipulated overall, but we won't get into that. But what I do want to talk to you guys a little bit more about is, first off, XRP is back in the fourth spot. We already kind of seen that a few days ago, but I think it's still good to know overall because we are still moving up. And we are only about $25 billion away from being at Binance's level to flip to the number three spot yet again. But I do want to talk to you guys about <clears throat> a little bit of the dominance factor. So currently right now, we are seeing a little bit of an impulse back up. Still expecting us to get down to much, much lower levels. The day's range right now is 44.49. Uh, currently... You know, we've seen a breakdown to about 44.74 recently. Uh, but for the most part, I still think that we're going to see about 43 very shortly here in terms of, you know, kind of a full breakdown to a lower support level, which is like probably about 43.8. Uh, but the reason why I bring this up is because if we look here, <laughs> we could actually see that Ethereum's dominance is flying. And why is this so important? And I'll tell you why. So back into 2017 and 2018, we seen that Ethereum's, you know, full on dominance was at around 30 overall. Now, I, I want to stress the idea that if we look at Bitcoin dominance as well, and we go back to those dates. Let me go to the one day on here. And we go back to 2017 and 2018. So around this time, you know, Bitcoin dominance was, we'll take it from the lowest point here, uh, so around 35. Now that this is going to January 14th, 2018. We go to January 14th, uh, 2018. We could see that we were ranging pretty high up into like the 20s. 
And right now we're going to about 20 right now, in which I think that at some point we are going to get a little bit of a correction down. But I think the lowest that we go is probably about 15 before climbing back up. I think that we're going to reclaim that 30 level. I just don't think that right now is the current time for that. But I still think that it's very interesting that we're seeing Ethereum climb in terms of dominance. And the reason why I'm very bullish on this is because once this climbs and once Bitcoin dominance continues to fall and get down to lower lows, then we'll see alts like XRP, HBAR and stuff really pump up in terms of price point. And I really think that XRP could hit $2 to, you know, $2.40 within a two week span. Now I'm expecting $2 to be broken uh, very soon within probably about a week and a half. Now that would put us about at the 20th of May, nearly the end of the month. Now, of course, we still have to analyze it because throwing a price point out there is kind of just not, you know, the true way of going about it. But the main reason why I think that we could see $2 is because we have recently broken out of a descending wedge. And I think that we are still making our way back up, even though the candles don't say so right now. Uh, we can't really look at, you know, short term. This is still on the one hour. And I still think that we are looking pretty good. Now, overall, I think if we break above the 175 range, which is what we haven't seen since pretty much May 6th, which was about four days ago, uh, I think once we break that key support, I think that we could range much, much higher. And I actually should say it's resistance overall, but I think once we break 175, I think we could really range to that $2 plus range. And at two dollars i think we're gonna see some a little bit of fomo happen to about two dollars and forty cents with a slight pullback down to about two dollars and then after two dollars is reclaimed i think that we could go much higher to reclaim the all-time high because we already know that we're going for the all-time high we're going to three dollars and 84 cents plus and i think that's going to happen probably by the middle of june uh would be a safe bet because by then we should see dominance at around you know, probably about 40 or a little bit lower. Ethereum's dominance should be at about 25, give or take. Uh, but we are still seeing a pretty decent move in the market right now. Uh, most alts are doing, you know, decent with ADA trading at about $1.80. Now, of course, that's not probably the live, you know, coin uh, price. But again, we are still seeing pretty good influx in terms of price as well as most alts doing decent uh now pretty much you know the old coins like for example bitcoin cash are doing incredible you know we've seen about i, I think it was like 15 yeah 15 67 dollars uh so you know 1567 from an investment at about 480 is massive uh, if you guys do want to get in on early trades like that, definitely follow me on Twitter as well as check out the Discord. They are in the description below because I was claiming that Bitcoin Cash was going to do major things uh, on the low back in you know, April, which I think we could kind of see where we were there overall. So, yeah, we got a low in April back here. It was at around like 600 uh, but I even claimed it back on the dip back in uh, that was pretty much at the low in February, which was about 447. And then I was talking about it all through March as well. So if you guys do want more information, free, pretty much knowledge, definitely follow me on Twitter and follow the Discord as well. Uh, you know, it's free to join. Uh, no, no payments or anything like that. I don't plan on pretty much making anything like that paid unless it's like pretty much a trading group where I post like, you know, what I'm getting into, where I see it going, stuff like that. Uh, but for the most part, I still think that this is going much lower. Um, this is probably going to continue pumping to about that 25 range before we really see a lot of stuff happening in the market. Now, of course, that doesn't mean we have to wait for that to happen. Uh, we're still going to see price influxes for all alts until that happens. But we are going to also see a lot of institutional money flow into the market. And I think that's going to add a lot 
a value to a lot of these assets. And I think right now, you know, a lot of these, you know, targets for these prices, they might just be at the end of the day, kind of washed down the drain by, you know, money kind of flowing in at astronomical rates. But nonetheless, guys, uh, I just figured I would update you all on what I'm seeing in terms of the market, really kind of update you on, you know, what to really look out for. Uh, but nonetheless, this has been Nick. Thank you all for the support. 90% uh, of you guys are not subscribed. So if you guys do want to, you know, catch my content as soon as it is live and get a notification, definitely subscribe and turn the notifications on. It helps the channel grow, helps me help more people as well. So I would greatly appreciate that. But nonetheless, guys, this has been Nick. I hope that you all have an amazing day or an amazing night, no matter where you are in the world. This has been Nick. Peace out.